espresso grinders that perform well and look stunning doing it. Today, an in-depth look at three new grinders from LX Italia. These grinders are manufactured in Italy with the clean, modern look designed by Studio Paoli in Milan. Hey, espresso lovers, Mark here from Whole Latte Love. Coming up, an in-depth look at these gorgeous new espresso grinders from LX, the Newton 55, Edison 65, and Edison SD 65. Those numbers, they refer to the burr size in millimeters, and the SD is for single dosing. In this video, I'll take you top to bottom through the grinders, looking at build quality, including internal components, how to operate the grinders, including programming, timed presets. I'll have test results for grind retention, grinding speed and noise level, plus a look at grind quality for clumping and static. And I'll wrap up with what's great, some things to be aware of, and some final thoughts. Now, whether you're an espresso geek or new to the game, be sure and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. If you're in the new camp, be sure and watch my espresso grind size for beginners video linked up here or down in the description. It's probably the most misunderstood espresso concept and super easy to solve. I'll have you doing it right in about five minutes. As always, if you have any questions on these grinders or anything coffee, use those comments and I'll be happy to get you a detailed answer. So before we dive into these LX grinders, the story of how we went from grinders that look like this to products like these LX grinders that grind better, cost a lot less, and will look fantastic as part of your coffee bar. So I've been reviewing espresso machines and grinders for more than a decade. If it's espresso related and available in North America, chances are I've used it and you know probably done a video on it. And wow, when I see something like these new grinders from LX Italia, it's a reminder of just how much things have changed. You know, around the time I got into espresso, popular grinders for home were units like the Ranchilio Rocky, the Gaja MDF, and if you were a serious espresso geek, maybe a more commercial unit like a Mazer. It was also around the time that Baratza made grinders more accessible with smaller burr, mostly plastic appliance grade products like the Vario. Then with the explosion in specialty coffee and the realization of just how important grind quality is when making espresso, home users demanded better products. With that, larger commercial style flat burr grinders took off for home use. Manufacturers like Chiato and others embraced the prosumer level with grinders that did and continue to blur the line between commercial and home use. Now, at first the crossovers weren't what most would call pretty, you know, kind of big and bulky, but you know, getting the job done and pumping out the high quality grind needed for exceptional espresso was the goal. Perhaps their more commercial aesthetic was desirable as users were sending a message they cared enough about their coffee to use what appears to be and frankly is a commercial quality grinder. But as home espresso grew in popularity, a segment of customers wanted the same or better performance in a smaller package that could make a design statement as part of their home setup. So over the last few years, grinders have slimmed down and moved to more visually pleasing designs. And that's what these LX grinders are all about. Performance that's equal or better than the commercial beasts. Upgraded usability, all wrapped in a visually stunning package with, well, luxury design features. Although LX is a newer brand, there's no shortage of technology or experience in their grinders. They're made in Italy by Conti Villario, who patented the grind size adjustment system used in the grinders. Starting at the top, a steel lid covers a hopper made of Triton, which is a BPA-free, fall-proof, shatter-resistant material. It's much clearer than other plastics and nearly sparkles with the look and clarity of glass. All models have a metal hopper shut off. It operates more freely on the single dosing version as closing it is part of the workflow when single dosing. Grind size adjusts using the same metal knurled knob on all three models. It's a larger, more solid adjustment than most other grinders with a similar setup. 
The patented size adjustment uses a stationary topper with the lower burr moving up and down, driven by the shaft through the motor. This means the grinder can be open for cleaning without losing a grind setting. To open, first use the included Allen wrench to remove the adjustment knob, then remove the magnetic logo button and the top screw behind it, which retains the top plate. Then remove the display assembly retaining screw, twist the display slightly counterclockwise and pull to remove. And work the trim ring back to give enough clearance to lift off the top plate. Then remove the top burr plate retaining screws and you're into the grinding chamber. Now coming up, I'll have numbers for retention and dosing accuracy, but I'll tease you here that it's really excellent. A big reason is the relatively narrow space around the burrs in the grinding chamber, a short distance from the chamber to the delivery chute, and the ACE static and clumping control system that's fairly wide open compared to some other grinders I work with. All those things reduce grind retention and help ground coffee flow more easily to your portafilter or dosing cup. And speaking of portafilters, I do like the slab cut of the adjustable supports on the non-SD models. I think it adds to the design and I've tried single, double, and bottomless portafilters from all the major manufacturers and they all work hands-free with no issues. The single dosing Edison has a thumb screw for easy height adjustment of the included dosing cup. The next generation touchscreen has an all glass front panel. It has the same functionality on all three models with single and double dose selections selected by pressing and holding one of those, then a short press to run. You can stop a dose in progress by pressing the selection again and restart that dose with another press. If needed, pressing and holding resets the time. You can run the grinder manually by pressing and holding both the dosing buttons. When you do that, the timer counts up from zero. The touchscreen is very reactive with response time similar to what you have on a smartphone. In fact, if you quickly press the single and double selection together to bump dose weight a bit, it's very precise, causing the grinder to run for almost under a tenth of a second. Changing the dose time is easy. Just use the plus or minus buttons to adjust. A short press makes changes in one tenth of a second increments. Pressing and holding makes rapid large time changes. Once you have the time you want, that's it. You do not have to save the change. It holds the time in memory, even if the grinder is turned off or unplugged from wall power. If desired, you can lock out time changes by pressing and holding the plus and minus buttons. After about a minute of inactivity, the display reverts to the crown logo. Pressing the crown logo wakes up the display. Pressing and holding the crown logo gets you into cycle counters and display brightness adjustments. Overall, control is intuitive and the touchscreen is very reactive. Now coming up, I'll have the test results for single dosing. Before we get there, I wanna take you through the single dosing process on the Edison SD65. Single dosing guarantees you get the purest possible dose and very accurate dose weights, a real consideration if you're using high-end specialty coffees or maybe you're gonna be switching coffee types a lot. To single dose, you're generally gonna weigh out your beans prior to grinding and typically you use the included dosing cup for that. Pour the beans in the hopper, replace the cover and place the dosing cup in the support forks. Then start a time grind cycle that's long enough to grind all of your beans. As the beans grind down, close the hopper cutoff to prevent popcorning of beans. To get close to all the beans being ground, operate the bellows of the blow up system as needed to blow out any residual ground coffee. With that, your ground coffee output should be within a tenth of a gram of your whole bean dosing weight. From there, use a dosing cup to load your portafilter. To test consistency of timed dosing weight output, I first dialed in each grinder to produce a one to two brew ratio using 18 grams of ground coffee to produce 36 grams of espresso. During dial-in, I adjusted times to get as close to 18 grams as possible by time. I then repeated those timed doses a total of 15 times on each grinder in three sets of five and averaged the results. 
I arrived at a 6.5 second cycle on the Edison 65 over the 15 cycles. The average dose weight was 17.97 grams. The lowest dose weight was 17.4 grams. The highest was 18.5. On the Newton 55, my grind time was 7.7 seconds. The average weight over the 15 test cycles was 17.92 grams. The lowest was 17.4 and the highest was 18.7. Overall, some fairly impressive results with the average dose for both within a tenth of a gram over the 15 cycles. I derived grinding speed using the results of the weight consistency test, dividing the average dose weight from the 15 cycles by the grind time for each grinder. The Edison 65 grinding speed was 2.76 grams per second. Grinding speed for the Newton 55 came in at 2.32 grams per second. Results were in line with LX's published grinding speed of 2.3 to 2.8 grams per second for the Edison 65, and my results for the Newton 55 of 2.3 grams per second were much better than LX's published results of 1.2 to 1.8 grams per second at espresso grind sizes. For unofficial noise level measurements, I used a smartphone app and placed the phone one foot from each of the grinders and noted the average and peak decibel levels during a five second grind cycle. The Newton 55 and Edison 65 were very close with averages at 59 and 61 dBs and peaks at 79 and 80 decibels. The Edison 65 single doser registered 68 average and 86 peak. Not surprising with its more open setup. Again, these are not lab quality measurements, but I'm comfortable saying these grinders are gonna be quieter than most. For grind retention, I'll look at two things, base level retention and a totally clean grinder and dose to dose retention after that base level builds up. To measure base level, I opened each grinder and thoroughly cleaned it out. I then ran 18 gram doses until I got a dose out within two tenths of the 18 gram dose and added back any shortage under the 18 grams and the doses it took to get there. For the non-single dosing Newton 55 and Edison 65, I got 16.1 grams out on the first cycle for each and 18 on the second cycle. So both had 1.9 grams of internal retention. Many non-single dosing grinders I've used come in at three to four grams in this test. The Edison SD65 was very close on the second grind cycle at 17.7 grams and hit the 17.9 on the third. Using my method, internal retention came in at 1.3 grams or a little more than half a gram better than the others. Dose-to-dose -dose retention measures how consistently ground coffee flows out of the grinder. For that, I loaded each grinder with 18 grams and looked for big variations in the amount of ground coffee delivered. All three grinders did exceptionally well. I did the test five times on each and never had more than two tenths of a gram variation from the 18 grams loaded. Notice these results are a little more consistent than those from my normal use hopper loaded, time grinding dose accuracy. Probably because I'm not feeding from a full bean hopper and grinding out as much as possible between the doses. Bottom line to these tests, internal retention. That's a solid 50% lower than similar flat bird grinders I've used. Why? Well, the LX grinder's internal grinding chamber is relatively small. The path from the chamber to the delivery chute is short and the static and clumping control isn't as restrictive as what you have on many grinders. If a fresh and consistent dose is important to you, these grinders are top tier in that regard. Appraising static clumping and distribution is a little subjective. Compared to other grinders I've used, these LX grinders, they do very well. No static issues to note, although in my experience, static problems are often related to humidity. Drier air usually means more static. Grinds generally come out with very little clumping, relatively fluffy. You won't get ground coffee boulders from these grinders. In my subjective judgment, grind from the larger 65 millimeter burrs straight into a porter filter were a little fluffier and more uniform in appearance. 
Distribution into the port filter was good, but there was some variance here depending on the combination of height adjustment of the port filter supports, coffee dose weight, and filter basket size. I'm confident end users will be able to adjust these variables to suit their situation. You know, it's no surprise these LX grinders were designed in Milan. Compare the ultra-modern look to the utilitarian workhorse design of espresso grinders from a decade ago. The clean, modern design is evident from top to bottom. From the aluminum lid covering the Triton hopper with glass-like clarity that complements the next generation glass touchscreen display, rising at a 30-degree angle for easy viewing. Grind adjustment is precise with a larger all-metal knurled knob that's bigger than those on other grinders with similar setups. The ACE anti-static system accurately delivers a fluffy, clump-free grind so your counters stay clean. The touchscreen interface is simple to use and reactive. I like that grind times are easy to change by just touching plus and minus with no menus to enter or extra steps to save the new settings. And I like the ergonomics with the upward facing screen, hands-free grinding and adjustable portafilter supports. Plus it's easy to bump a dose by pressing the single and double buttons simultaneously. Things to be aware of, these are prosumer level grinders. So considering for commercial use, that's not what they're designed for. The single dosing Edison uses timed presets. Otherwise the only way to have the motor run continuously is to hold down the single and double presets. And a lot of SD grinders, you turn them on, grind, then turn them off. With the SD Edison, you just need to make sure your timed preset is long enough to grind your entire dose. I suppose using the timer saves a step as you don't have to turn the motor off manually. The new LX grinders combine luxury design and excellent performance. They have very little internal retention. Consistent dosing weights and the precise grind size adjustment needed for espresso. They are available now from Whole Latte Love. If you have any questions on these grinders or anything coffee, use those comments and I'd be happy to get you a detailed answer. I'm Mark, thanks for watching. And if you love coffee and espresso as much as I do, be sure and subscribe to the channel and come back soon for more of the best on everything coffee brought to you by Whole Latte Love.